everyone. Um, I am Margo Youngberg. I'll be directing Wearable Art 2024 Neon Apocalypse. To my right, Nora, I work at Jack. And <laughs> I used to be a wearable artist. So you can answer questions. Awesome. Yeah. To my left, I'm Rochelle. I also work at the Jack. Yeah, I will also point out that at this point, if anybody needs scholarship help, that Rochelle is the one to reach out to at this point who can then get you in touch with whoever you need to. to yes. And her email is in the packet. Uh, and I'm Kathleen Harper. I am also a Jack staff member and wear many hats, uh, one of which is stage manager, usually venue manager, and also artist many years. First on our agenda is to highlight changes for this year as opposed to years in the past. There are a lot of changes as compared to the two most recent wearable arts because that was our COVID wearable arts where we was online and then it was the required to wear a mask wearable art but we're past that. So think more back to like 2020 wearable art when things were different. The before time. The before time. <laughs> a huge difference is that the show is in September. That's pretty different. Yes. Um, which means that registration is May 17th. Okay, so September is a big change. Another thing that I think is a big change compared to recent years is music. The faces in the room just lit up. <laughs> we are going to have access potentially to popular music, music that you hear in a movie, on the radio, you know, that kind of stuff, rather than needing to use the free digital libraries that we've had to access the last two shows. The caveat is we need to pay for the licensing for said music. I talked to Reggie today, just trying to get like a price range. What are we talking about? Is it like $10,000 a song? So she said, if the music, I think three years or older, it actually can be pretty inexpensive, like less than $10. If the song is within like two years, maybe it goes up to $15. And then if the song is like currently popular, then she's seen prices at like $50 for the song. Um, but she said really it depends on what the song is, who the artist is, who's what's the record label, like everyone sets their own prices. So the only way we're really going to be able to address it is to go song by song. So like years past, you're going to submit your three music choices in order of preference, first, second, and third. I'll look at it. We'll probably have a discussion. You know, why did you pick number one? Because it's, you know, an up-tempo song. And then you said your song, your piece is about sadness and storm clouds. And then you'll explain to me why and we'll move on from there. Meanwhile, at the same time, Jack's staff will be looking at the song choices to figure out the pricing if that song is selected. We're going to be using part of your registration fee to pay for that song. If it is above your registration free fee, then we would look to the artist to, to finish off that payment, but we would ask you for it. And just so you have an idea of that discussion <laughs> time frame, we're having artist interviews at the end of May, and then we're having what's called the artist check-in in August. And at the check-in in August, is when we are going to play your cut that the sound um, engineer will be cutting for you. So you have until the beginning of August for that deadline end of conversation so that cuts can be made for that last little bit of August. Does that make sense? Do we have to download the song or will it be? The question is, will they have to download the song? No, provide as much information as possible and we will have like in prior, 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 prior years, Betsy yeah. purchased the thing so she can get the high quality yep. version that she needs so that we don't have to do a bunch of back and forth. I'm like, oh, wait, that one's a low quality. And yeah. yeah. And in years past, simple. when we play mm -hmm. that song, we're like, is this the right one? And you say, no, we'll check. Could someone apply for a scholarship in music toward music costs? Something to think about? That's a really good question. Um, it just is a matter of how expensive those song plates are to come up in the telephone for that. Yeah. In case that answer was not picked up, the answer from Phil, the executive director, was, I don't see why not, but that will require further discussion and depend on the cost of the music and how much of the scholarship funding is available. 
wonderfully paraphrased. And if he likes it. And if he likes it, yeah. that'd be Bruno Mars. Um, I maintain executive decision making. Oops. Great. <laughs> okay. A little tiny bit of difference. The other big thing, we are only going to have one mandatory rehearsal and one optional rehearsal. Plus grand parade rehearsal, tech rehearsal, dress rehearsal, that. So in end of August, we will have the required rehearsal at Centennial Hall with the full runway taped on the floor, which is great. And we'll do 30 minutes, 15 minutes with me, 15 minutes with one of the coaches. Then we'll have a little week off for you guys to diligently be practicing or working on your ideas and crafting your pieces because obviously you guys can spend many hours on that. And then September 8th, 9th and, 9th and 10th, we'll be at the Jack where we kind of condense the runway and we'll practice, we can practice again, but that is an optional rehearsal and not required. Margo, yeah. I'm also gonna throw in mm -hmm. that one of the things we we'll wanna pull people about is we do have a little bit of time sort of reserved in the Jack in that middle week if people would be interested in having just like open time, not with Margot or any model coaches, but just like time to be in a larger space in order to practice things if your piece warrants it. Yeah. So, you know, there in, in some years past, um, some people can do stuff in their living rooms just fine. And other people might have trouble doing much in their living rooms based on the size of their piece. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that people are interested in, um, we'll kind of continue that conversation as we go. Right now we've got that held. Yeah. Um, in case there are people who just need that extra time to be not in their living rooms working on things. So we're not staying <laughs> at men and home. No, no men mall. and home mall. We, yeah, we haven't had to be at the mall in many years, and we are so grateful that they were available to us when they were. But in recent years, we get to be in the jack, and that's worked out really well. And I will say, if after that first mandatory rehearsal, if anyone is having a bit of a, like an emotional crisis and they say, Margo, can you please give me one other rehearsal with your eyes? I would of course consider that and we can figure that out individually. Just let me. Um, if, if folks are interested in that, that would be September 3rd and 4th for the open studio time. Well, we probably just do it as a sign up thing with like, you know, yeah, slot times for people to come in um, and just let people kind of have the space. So have the rocker ready to, for people to play their music and all that good stuff. Another change from the most recent wearable arts, but a return to previous wearable arts, we will have models displayed in the small lobby immediately following this. And then I think the idea is there will also be a living gallery, but it will be optional that um, if people want to also do that, they can. If they can't, you have time, whatever, then that's not the end of the world. And that would be on a first Friday following so that we'd already have people kind of coming through and it would just be another option for people to kind of see the pieces not crammed into the tiny lobby. <laughs> Is that the one where you can cast off to somebody that's not your model to wear? Or yeah. do you provide them? Yes, you can pass it off to someone not your model. You can also have a dress form. I think at the living gallery, the one that is not immediately following the show, I'm and I love every single model I get to work with, but I think the most important person at that particular event is the artist because the people who come to that really want to talk to the artist about like, wait, you said you use trash bags, but I don't see it. And then you are like, but it's this leather texture. And I get all excited. That's who they want to talk to more than seeing the same model who we've built up. I will also throw in there it is <clears throat> how we've talked about it so far is that it is optional with the asterisk if not enough artists to do it. We won't do it. If yeah. we only get yeah. two people being like, yeah, I want to, that's not enough. It's just they could greet people. What if we just read all of our wearable arts outfits though? <laughs> <laughs> so for the recording, what? The executive director, so said, <laughs> is that if it is the caveat to the living gallery is that if we don't have enough artists of interest in participating, then we just won't do it. And then do you, either of you, because I'm thinking of changes, I'm going through my brain. Right. Do either of you want to talk about jury? jury? Yeah. I can, I'll let you guys I can do that. If, and then Rochelle, if you want to jump in, if I, after many years of 
uh, working with trying to make the juring process work. Um, the Jack has decided along with the board that um, we're just not gonna do juring anymore uh, moving forward. Uh, partly just because it seems like most of the artists aren't necessarily like they're, most artists seem apathetic in applications typically are like, well, sure, maybe. And that's not usually the big motivator for wanting to participate in the, in the show. Like it's about the creative process and, and that. <clears throat> so there won't be any during uh, moving forward. And that's one less thing to have to deal with in terms of like having to do interviews and, you know, prep things mm -hmm. for that. So that's one less thing for artists to have to deal with as well. What we will do instead is we'll keep the Sybil Davis Award, which is the, the, the people's choice kind of thing. We may have two tiers for that. Maybe that's something we're still discussing. But in order to make it not just like an audience popularity thing, we're also going to add an artist and models choice category that only the artists and models get to vote on because you guys are working together you're seeing each other's stuff you're in the dressing room thick of it and so you have a different sense of what these pieces are than maybe the audience does when it goes up on the runway if that makes sense so um a chance for everybody in in that side to say i really think this piece is amazing and i want to say they deserve the recognition and there will be no cash prizes attached to it it is just for honor and glory <laughs> but Laura's gonna make something cool. Yes, yes. <clears throat> like an award, a belt, <clears throat> like a wrestling belt. If you win, I will make you a wrestling. Yeah, belt. <laughs> hell yeah. So that's yeah, sweet. With glitter that I will give her off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the exchange will be in the parking lot. <laughs> I got way too quiet. <laughs> and then reiterating, just for people who are planners, dress rehearsal. And the show are September 21st, and then the Sunday show is September 22nd. So that is where we end things, May and <laughs> September. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and like the, they're basically all, like once registration's done and we do our preliminary interviews, just be like, tell us about your piece. There won't be anything really for artists and models to do at all until August really yeah um, we might do some like orientation things and the ticket sale party will be at some point right but but in terms of stuff you have to do it won't be until the fall so you'll have all summer to do all the things and I've heard you know people are like it's the summer I want to do summer things so like an interview could be done by zoom if someone was camping somewhere and had zoom or um was on vacation you could zoom and the same with the artist check-in that can be by Zoom. We do lots of things by email. So we really are trying to keep it very flexible until when uh, Kathleen said about when you physically need to be present. Because lots of this stuff can be done in a different way, if that's what you would prefer. And if you want to be physically present, we love that too. We're um, at the new and upcoming things, I think. If the, like, a, for the artist packet or, like, for our application thing, is it the same, like, mood board and yeah. sketch it out and yeah that's all right it can be <laughs> stick figures like I mean, you know student, my, like <laughs> stuff you know it could totally it. be stick figures or it could be like like a word cluster rather than a mood board or even like a like maybe two sentences if you're like a word cluster isn't how my brain works I'll or it can be pictures. Yeah, or it can be pictures, pictures of the, material. A bunch of pictures that I stole off the internet and put onto a, a dot that is the PDF yeah. now. <laughs> it could be a high <laughs> yes. Or like the nine crayon colors that oh. you're most likely to like have. The neon apocalypse. Well, I don't know what that is to you. Maybe that's a rose, a dusty rose. <laughs> With your Taylor Swift song. <laughs> Could be. Uh, we just realized we do have one other thing that's changing for this, or that we're going back to. Yeah. Um, that we are going back to the zigzag. Uh, Stage? The yes. zigzag runway. Zigzag runways. Yeah. Returning. I, I love that one. Yeah. yeah. You, it, you can post Great it posting. easier. Great post for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, awesome. a, that's like a trusted friend. Like, hey. I know you. <laughs> I feel like it also makes Grand Parade easy because it's easier 
stop clearly spacing. where you're gonna yeah oh <laughs> yeah only that first leg you have to kind of walk a little faster and also for anybody that might be watching that doesn't know the, <clears throat> the theme is neon apocalypse but like every year you are not required to create your piece based on the theme so if a dusty rose taylor swift fan castle is what you want do it Phil's excited. I'm so excited for you and that. The last thing that we wanted to let everybody know about is that we will be hosting a Technically Art, which is one of our programs that we do. It's a behind the scenes professional development series. We'll be hosting one in April, um, Saturday, April 27th. And this one is specifically for how to build a wearable art piece. So it's um, geared more towards new artists, but also um, artists that have been participating are also welcome to come to that. And it'll be sort of a panel discussion with some ideas and um, questions to, um, you know, just get the discussion flowing and help to maybe like send new artists on a path for like where they would go to source materials, um, you know, who they might talk to if they have questions. And um, so we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. So spread the word. So hopefully if there's any, if you, if you as veteran artists, all of you here are veteran artists. Yeah. Um, if you know, if any, you're in your conversations with people in the, in the community and they're like, oh my gosh, this wearable art thing, I'm interested in it. I've never done it, but I'm interested and I think I might want to, that technically art will be a great thing for them to attend if they have questions about like, well, but how do I even start? Where do I get things? Are there places where they have tools that I could use if I don't have them or, you know, like all that stuff, we'll try to yeah. kind of dig into that. Do you guys have any other questions? Since I haven't been in town for the last sort of thing, mm -hmm. my last in town one is real. It sounds like all in person, all is the is it still that same manager? Like, are those any of that stuff in effect still, or like uh, your dressing room slots are in slots and and all of that, or like is all I don't know what normal for now is. Yeah, so we'll <laughs> um. I think that we instituted kind of having assigned dressing room spaces before the pandemic and it just helped kind of make the dressing room spaces one less chaotic and just more kind of like uh, amenable for everybody. Um, so I think we'll probably still try and do that and have assigned dressing room spaces. Um, we're still limiting the amount of people who are allowed to be backstage. So it'll be like artists and model and then like the one backstage helper, right? Um, and we still really want to keep that backstage space as kind of the the sacred space for the artists and models. And it's not for like everybody's family and friends and whoever to come back and like, um, <clears throat> cause it's tight back there. It's, you yeah. know, and depending on how many artists we have, um, the years when we have a lot or even just several pieces with many people, then it can get kind of really like tight or <laughs> there for all those bodies. Yeah. Like the steak knife pieces. piece and the balloon piece and they have to share a space. They need space. We do. We're probably still going to keep that. And that's still the, the idea and the goal. But everyone's like in the same room without like, you don't have like walls. Like no walls. Like no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, and there's tables around the court, around the edges kind of deal. Back. There's, there's some right. coat hangers in there or coat racks in there for people to hang things on. There's like a little curtained off dressing space. If people need a little more privacy to get into their bits. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have like stage with mom, right? Too. Cause I feel like that's the thing is. <laughs> advocate for everybody right. to get some like artists who are too, yeah. too yeah. classy and steal all the tables and yeah. chairs and stuff it's like the the yeah, stage room mom yeah we'll still have the or stage room mom or dad. dad we'll still have if if the artists who sign up require it we'll still have the under 21 room you know if we don't have under 21 then we don't have to but and I believe that even though we designate space, artists still get to choose yes. their space. <laughs> we have some that we, in the past, were like designating a large piece space. So that just because like there was a corner that it was next to, um, but like you two could still choose to be next to each other. We would just be like, that's your half of the table and that's your half of the table. Um, and then her question about vaccination. Did you want to address that? Oh, no longer an issue at this point. Okay. No longer a requirement. So I'm kind of catching up with everyone. Open. No, right. totally. It's a good question because you might and not it, be the only one. It, it was a thing for a while. And now that we're kind of to a place where there's more people who are um, and there's a little less concern about 
um, availability of if you want to be vaccinated, you have the availability to. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. And our mm-hmm. hospitals aren't full. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, you know, I'd say that though, because of that, anybody who is like, immune compromise should just know we're going to we're in a big giant room mm-hmm. with a lot of people yeah. so um if there are people who have um needs around that communicating that early to yeah. the team will be good so that we can just like um see if there's anything we can do to accommodate that i guess my question is do we know about how much time we'd have like i realize uh, i'm on the runway Mm-hmm. we've gone back to the two minutes okay. although we have two minutes seven seconds so like you know you have paid time and like yeah. you know yeah get your music to a good natural yeah. end yeah <laughs> that was for the anniversary to be like oh, a... but yeah two minutes and seven. Different. back to the classic two minutes and seven seconds on, on a zigzag with your own music provided it's not four hundred dollars unless you want to pay four hundred dollars Okay. So I guess I have one more question too, and I don't know if maybe this is something that came up based off of the past few years. Yeah. Um, like the last in-person year I did was the whole, so you know, the whole like sort of stuff that went on, and there was a lot of the sort of appropriation meetings after that, and there was a lot of talk about what might happen in the next coming years of sort of checking out pieces and checking out whole things. Mm. Um, and it might switch how many checks or how many things were either approved or not approved or that sort of thing. Is there a process for that or is it, are there like final no changes after a certain amount of time? Or I know there, there was a lot of ideas completely fresh um, yeah. when I was last in person, but I don't know if any of that is. I can take that. Do you want to repeat the point? <laughs> That's that really. Yes. Right. Um, the, the question, let me, it, tell me if I'm not boiling this down well enough is like how are we dealing with the check-ins um to try and make sure that we are catching anything that might go against the racial equity and um inclusion kind of part of what the jack is doing these days um as well as any kind of thing that might be cultural appropriation and or like oh wow you just copied something off of a paris runway 100 <laughs> percent um, so all those little bits and <clears throat> there is in the artist packet, uh, the Jack statement on racial equity, which has a whole thing about like what that means and how we're kind of approaching it. Um, the very first artist meeting that we have after the applications come in is a chance. Um, there'll be a board member who sits in on that. Um, most likely he was a part of our DEIA committee. It's likely going to be parents or guys, but the universe. Specifically, an eye for anything like that, right? You know, be Marco and myself. And uh, if we have our, our our producer person by then, like traditionally that would have been Megan. And like two years ago, it was um, Sarah Wallace. Sarah Wallace. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Then uh, if anything comes up in that interview that we're like, huh, okay, you, uh, you want to use all ovoids <laughs> in your piece let's talk about that. Like, um, are we doing this in a way that is like culturally responsible and responsive and stuff like that? Or is there a reason why it has to be this or whatever? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, um, it's, it'll also be a chance for us to, if there's anything that we think might need some sort of audience warning, or we want to time well, a couple of years back, we had the, the vagina piece, if you remember, we had discussions about that and how we wanted to approach it both in the MC script and just, you know, making sure the community knew what they were going to be getting into and giving people a chance to like, leave if they wanted to, right. So like that was built into our process. And we had the time to come up with that, because we had those meetings. So part of what those, those interviews after the applications come in is a chance for us to be like, okay, what is your vision? How are you doing? What is this going to be about? Is there anything that we might need to have further discussions of because it might go into murky territory, right? So that we have time to deal with that. And then we're instituting this secondary check-in um, in August before those rehearsals happen, because hopefully by then people have at least started their pieces um, and will kind of know that like, oh, originally I was going to I glue all my things together and and now it's completely changed because like the materials weren't doing what I wanted. And so now we're going this complete other direction, but we're still doing it. Right. 
because that happens a lot. It happens, right? Um, so that'll be a chance for us to say, okay, so, you know, in the interview way back when, maybe it was just your stick figure drawings and nothing had really been started yet. So it was all just the ideas. And that'll be a chance for us to say, okay, where are we at now? Is there anything else that we need to discuss that's changed? Or maybe as you've been building your piece, I mean, it could also be too that maybe as you've been building your piece, I said it was going to be this upbeat, wonderful thing. And this other thing happened in my life and now it's going to be completely different mood wise. So I need to talk to you about that. Right. So it gives us a chance to kind of like have another check-in before we start the rehearsal process. And then the final thing is that we do require that people wear their pieces for tech because that gives us a chance to say, oh, okay, now we know more about what's going on because not everybody brings their stuff to rehearsals, right? Uh, for dress, it's absolutely required that we have to have all the makeup. Like, what are you, it's like you're doing the show, right? And that gives us one more time to sort of be like, oh, we need to make some adjustments to your friend. Um, if there's if it's else. not, because what we have in the packet is if it's not all there at dress rehearsal, then whatever you did at dress, that's what you're doing. Yeah. So that would be. Yep. So there's like a like a yeah yeah no further yeah so a dress no after dress there's no further addition whatever hits the runway at dress is what that is now granted if like your feather all fall off at dress because we've had that happen you can attach those on again but you yeah, can't then be like swap that out for this other thing so. and the only thing I would add just based on interviews that we've had in recent years is like the whole conversation doesn't have to doesn't have to happen at interviews you know like there might be some discussion there and then maybe we reach out again through email we might you know have coffee together and have discussions so you know it's not like it's like now suddenly I'm at a two-hour interview yeah. that was a good question does that does that answer everything yes. for you yeah okay. that's <clears throat> there was just a lot of ideas floating around yeah about what it might look like and I was there for the sort of conclusion. I was just there for the effort Right. So and the yeah, goal right. is not to just tell anybody a hard no, you just can't do that, right? The goal is to try and guide people to a place where um, it's more appropriate, if that makes sense, or that we're dealing with it in a way that is going to get us to a place that we're uplifting vision, but we're also not like squatting. Or <clears throat> putting the jack or our artist or in models in a compromising position. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, a liability thing, not only for us, but. So nobody, I mean, everybody knows, well, we all know each other. We see each other in the grocery store and people are not afraid to talk about stuff. So like making that like less of a, more of a fun conversation and less of a horrible conversation. Amy, is okay. there anything you were curious about just to get like that? If I had to summarize things that I think Amy would be interested in, yeah. we're going back to the zigzag runway. You get to choose. We're going back to the submit three song choices, but they can be from popular music. However, the change to that is we now need to pay licensing rights, and they have varying prices based on how old the song is, who the artist is, who the, um, you know, who holds rights to the songs, all that stuff. And when I talk to Reggie, it varies from like $2 to $50 and sometimes even more. And we, as the Jack, will help with up to $10 of that fee, which should include many songs, access to many songs. Anything above that, we would talk with the artist and say, this song would cost you $40 because its total price is $50. Do you want to pay $40 to be able to use the song? Um, but other than that, the music approval process of, you know, first choice, second choice, third choice, tell me why it's your first choice. Okay, you can have it like we normally do. We'll the only thing you have to is change the rehearsal, right? Oh, yeah. One, <laughs> one mandatory rehearsal, one optional rehearsal. Not okay. including dress rehearsal and tech. And grand break. Oh, and... Grand Parade, sorry. <laughs> Grand, Parade is, Grand Parade is basically what we've been. No more choreographed dance moves of the whole group. That is gone forever. Goodbye. Um, we're, we're still working with the, hopefully we'll be able to get artists photos um, at a time that we'll arrange so that those can go up on the screens and it'll be the one at a time 
review of the show mm -hmm. going through. So the rehearsal for Grand Parade is really just about timing the people coming out of the thing and us doing our like, yeah, go. <laughs> Which was like important when we had the giant robot. Yes. We needed to know if we could walk that fast. And when we had the dress made out of bark and chicken wire. also And the mermaid uh, dress the mermaid. with the like tiny, tiny steps. Yeah. So, you know, it serves a purpose. And it's an opportunity for you to wear your entire piece, not hair and makeup at Grand Parade. It's fun to get to see each other and geek out on our hard work. And that uh, open studio space, is that for the practicing? Yes. <clears throat> During the week of Labor Day, those two days. If people are interested in open space for construction, let us know. There is a monthly artists of all nations um like open studio space that happens at the jack anyway uh that should be on the community calendar and that's just anybody comes there's tables people do their thing right um so that would be an opportunity that people could use the jack space if you just need to like i need to lay out a big giant thing um <clears throat> and i need space bigger than my living room to do it um or my dining room table or whatever um then that, that would be an opportunity. But if people are interested in other times, let us know. And that might be something that we could look at scheduling, getting on the schedule. It's like open studio space. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'd also say, I know people have had some luck getting like a monthly membership to the um, makerspace as well, um, which has comes with a bunch of tools and things like that that they have there as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Where we are. Yes. Woo, woo.